Hello friends, the topic for today is 80386DX exceptions and interrupts. Interrupts and exceptions are special kinds of control transfer. They work somewhat like unprogrammed calls. They alter the normal program flow to handle external events or to report errors or exceptional conditions. Interrupts are used to handle asynchronous events external to the processor, but exceptions handle conditions detected by the processor itself in the course of executing instructions. In today's video, you will learn interrupts and exception identification and classification of 80386DX microprocessor. Let us start. Welcome to our channel Engineering and Technology for You. If you are not subscribed to our channel, kindly subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon to get notifications about the future videos. The topic for today is 80386DX exceptions and interrupts. We will just see the identification and classification of exceptions and interrupts. Introduction Exceptions and interrupts are forced transfer of execution to a task or a procedure. A task or procedure is called the handler. Interrupt occur at random times during the execution of a program in response to signals from hardware. So that's why they are asynchronous. Then exceptions occur when instructions are executed which provoke exceptions. That means there is some exceptional condition in the instruction. That's why it will lead to the exceptions. Usually the servicing of interrupts and exception is performed in a manner transparent to application program. Interrupts are used to handle events external to the processor such as request to a service peripheral devices. So generally the interrupts have external events. So service to peripheral devices can be given by the processor with the help of interrupts. Then exception handle conditions detected by the processor in the course of executing instructions such as division by zero. Now, whenever the processor is executing the instructions, it will detect certain exceptional condition. For example, here division by zero. So this is an exception. So the exception will be handled by the exceptional handler. Then let us go to the sources of interrupts and exceptions. There are two sources of interrupts and two sources of exceptions. For interrupts, maskable interrupt, which are received on the iron tier input of the 80386DX microprocessor. So those are the maskable interrupts. Maskable interrupts do not occur unless the interrupt enable flag, that is IF, is set. So if it is not set, then maskable interrupt will be neglected. That's why maskable, it will not say if it is set, then only they will not appear. Maskable interrupt do not occur unless the interrupt enable flag is set. We have to set the IF. Now, maskable interrupt means they can be masked with the help of this flag. If it is clear, the flag is clear, the interrupts are masked. So this INTR input will not, uh, even if you give any input to this pin, the 8086 will not respond. Then non-maskable interrupts, which are received on the NMI pin, non-maskable interrupt input of the processor. The processor does not provide a mechanism to prevent non-maskable interrupts. So they are non-maskable, so we cannot prevent them. Then let us come to the exceptions. 
processor detect exceptions these are further classified as faults traps and abort we'll see this in details later on then program exceptions the int0 int3 intn and bound instructions may trigger exceptions these instructions often are called software interrupts but the processor handles them as exceptions so int0 then intn and int3 all these are the say software interrupts we call but then the processor will handle them as exceptions so these are the two sources for exceptions and for interrupts we have the maskable and non maskable interrupts then let us go to the exception and interrupt vectors the processor associates an identifying number with each different type of interrupt or exception this number is called a vector so for identification of interrupt or exception a number is associated and that number is called as the vector the nmi interrupt and the exceptions are assigned vectors in the range 0 to 31 then not all these vectors are currently used in the intel 80386 architecture unsigned vectors in this range are reserved for possible future uses do not use unsigned vectors so we should not use the uns unsigned or reserved vectors the vectors for maskable interrupt are determined by the hardware external interrupt controllers such as intel's 8259 programmable interrupt controller put the vector on the bus of 80386 dx microcontroller during the interrupt acknowledge cycle inta so any vectors in the range 32 through 255 are can be used so 32 to 255 they are used by the maskable interrupts and 0 to 31 they are used by the nmi and exceptions so table shows the assignment of the exceptions and interrupt vectors let us see the details of the assignment in the table so here these are the vector numbers and here we have the description for that so 0 is divided by divide 0 divide error so whenever uh, there is a divide by 0 then that is called as the divide error then 1 is for debug exception then 2 is for nmi interrupt that is the non maskable interrupt then 3 is for breakpoint then 4 is for int0 detected overflow then 5 is for bound range exceeded so whenever the bound range is exceeded at that time this vector 5 will be initialized then 6 is invalid upcode when the upcode is invalid then it will give rise to the say vector number for that is 6 then 7 is coprocessor not available so in the hardware if the coprocessor is not available or there is problem with the coprocessor at that time this the number for that is 7 then 8 is double fault then 9 is coprocessor segment overrun so if whenever the segment of the coprocessor overruns at that time it will have the vector number 9 then 10 is invalid task state segment so task test segment will be studying when we study the multi processing then 11 segment not present then 12 stack fault if there is fault with the stack or stack pointer then this vector number 12 is assigned then 13 is general protection then 14 page fault so already we have seen the page translation in memory management so whenever there is a page fault then it will lead to this it is assigned vector number 14 then 15 is reserved by intel and similarly 
this 17 to 31 they are reserved by Intel. So, we should not use these vector numbers. 16 is for coprocessor error and then 32 to 255 they are for the maskable interrupts. So, here with the help of the 8259 interrupt controller we can have many interrupts 32 to 255. So, these are the interrupt vectors for the exception and interrupts. Then let us go to the exception classification. Exceptions are classified as faults, traps and abhors depending on the way they are reported and whether the restart of the instruction which causes the exception is supported. So, already we have discussed there are three types of exceptions fault, traps and abhors. So, let us see the faults. A fault is an exception which is reported at the instruction boundary prior to the instruction in which the exception was detected. So, it will be reported at the instruction boundary. Then fault is reported with the machine restored to a state which permits the instruction to be restarted. Then the return address of the fault handler points to the instruction which generated the fault rather than the instruction following the faulting instruction. So, here the return address for the fault handler points to the instruction which generated the fault rather than the instruction following the faulting instruction. That is why here there will be a say change of alteration of the say program flow. Because normally the instruction pointer will have the address of the next instruction. So, here it will have the address of the instruction which has generated the fault. Then let us go to the next that is traps. A trap is an exception which is reported at the instruction boundary immediately after the instruction in which the exception was detected. So, that was fault was prior to the instruction and here immediately after the instruction in which the exception was detected. Then abouts. An abort is an exception which does not always report the location of the instruction causing the exception and does not allow restart of the program which caused the exception. Abouts are used to report severe errors such as the hardware errors or inconsistent or illegal values in the system tables. So, then the abort will be say reported and will have to abort the system. So, this is the exception classification. Then the with this we come to the end of this video. The next video will be on enabling and disabling of interrupts. If you have any questions, you can contact me on Facebook, Twitter, Gmail or Instagram. Then if you like the video, press the like button, share with your friends and subscribe to our channel engineering and technology for you. And if you want to get notifications, don't forget to press the bell icon because directly you will get the notification after subscribing the channel. Then thanks for watching.